A condition in a conditional statement is really just a question with a yes or no answer. In JavaScript, we say that the condition evaluates to either true or false. True and false have a specific meaning in JavaScript. They are called booleans. And like strings and numbers, they represent one of the data types in JavaScript. Though they have an unusual name, booleans are simple. Remember, a boolean value can be only one of the two possible values, true or false. That's it. There will be times where we want to ask our program yes or no questions, then run different code based on those answers. Let's have a look at some examples. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below, unzip it and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript Conditional Statements. And then open the index.html file using Google Chrome. Here I also open the JavaScript console. In the index.html file, remember to link booleans.js file. In JavaScript programming, the two possible boolean values are represented by the keywords true and false. Because all conditions return true or false value, you can see how these two keywords work by using them in this if-else statement. If I type true inside the condition, Save the change, refresh the page. The message it is true displays in the console. Now, if I type false inside the condition, save the change, refresh the page. The message it is false displays in the console. Notice that There are no quotation marks around the words true or false because they are not strings. They each represent a specific type of value, a boolean value. So quotes should not go around them. We can assign a boolean value to a variable just like we can assign a string or number to a variable. This is a common way to keep track of certain condition throughout the program. For example, let's see how we can use a boolean value in a number guessing game. First, I'll start by creating a new variable using the let keyword with the name is correct guess. And set it to boolean value false. When the game begins, the player hasn't guessed anything. So the value of is correct guess is false. The value of this variable only change if the player guessed the correct number. And notice how we are using the let keyword here. Because we expect the value of is correct guess to change. Next, I'll create a variable named actual number to store the number to guess. We can set it to any number between 1 and 5. I'll set it to 3. Then, let's create one more variable named my guess to store the value returned by the prompt dialog that asks, please guess a number between 1 and 5. Next, Below the my guess variable, let's write a conditional statement that updates the is correct guess variable from false to true if the user guessed the correct number. I'll type if my guess strictly equal to actual number run the code inside these curly braces. So this block of code will tell the JavaScript engine that if the number the user typed into the prompt dialog exactly matches the number stored in the actual number variable, please update the value of is correct guess variable from false to true. If the player guessed wrong, the value of the variable is correct guess remains false. Now there's one more detail we need to address in this condition. As I mentioned earlier that the value returned by the prompt method is a string. So notice how in the condition we are comparing a number value with a string value. For example, even if the user types 3, the program will compare the number 3 inside quotes with the actual number value 3. So this condition always returns false. Because we are using the strict equality operator and the game will not work as expected. So to make sure the game works properly, we need to convert the string value returned by the prompt method to a number value. The best and easiest way is adding a plus symbol or the unary plus operator just before the my guess variable like this.
make sure that there's no space between them. So now this ensures that we are comparing two number values. It may seem a little strange, but don't worry too much about this operator for now. I will teach you more about converting strings to numbers and working with number values in later courses. Finally, let's modify the conditional statements below. First, I'll add the condition as is correct guess strictly equal to true. If it's true, then log the message great. If it's false, then display a message that includes the actual number. I'll use a template literal to insert the value of the actual number variable into the message. I'll add back checks. Sorry, the number was dollar sign curly brace and actual number and that's it all right let's see it in action i'll save the change refresh the page the prompt dialog appears i'll type two click ok the console displays sorry the number was three refresh the page the prompt dialog appears. I'll type 3 this time. Click OK. And I see the message great. You can also simplify the code in this if else statement. Remember that all conditions are either true or false. That is, the test condition produces a Boolean value. Since the is correct guess variable is already assigned with true or false value, you don't need to use the strict equality operator at all. In other words, this condition is the same as this. And as you can see, the number guessing game still works in the same way as before. There are definitely other ways to write this number guessing game without having to use two separate conditional statements. I use this approach to teach you how booleans get evaluated and affected the flow of a program when used in conditional statements.